So now we know what a function is, we know what a function isn't, a much easier way than to try and deal with this with, with numbers and with like trying to do tables in our head is just to draw things. So I would like you to draw, whoopsie daisy, I'd like you to draw one set of axes, so that's four, for each of these. And we're gonna draw a picture and find a much easier way, like rather than all this fancy language, a really simple visual way to work out, is something a function or is it not? So can you draw those four sets of axes for me? They don't even need to be too large. I usually like quite large diagrams, but these can be quite small. Draw four sets of axes. And let's real quick draw each of these roughly and see what's going on. So on my first set of axes, I'm gonna draw this guy. Y equals two X minus three. What kind of a shape will I draw? What category of shape am I drawing? This is a straight line, very good. What can you tell me about the straight line from these numbers? Like say the two, what does that tell you? It's going to be going, um, from left to right it's going up. Is it, is it shallow or is it steep? The two, the two. This is the gradient, right? So gradients rise over run. So every time you go across one unit, you go up two. That's what that gradient means. So this is quite steep, yeah? What about the negative three, what does that tell us? Does anyone know? It's the y-intercept, so this tells me where I am up and down, okay? So very, very roughly speaking, it's gonna look something like that. Let's make that negative three. Uh, let's just call that y equals two x minus three. Okay? To get the pattern, I'm gonna draw all of these or four of these, and then we'll work out what is it that clearly distinguishes the functions from the not functions, okay? Uh, y equals x squared. This is really easy to draw with. We're really good at this. Uh, what kind of shape is it? Look carefully. It's a parabola, right? Um, so you know this shape. It's gonna look something like this. How's that? You ever that? Uh, it passes through the origin. It's, that's where its vertex is. So let's call that y equals x squared, okay? Now, this guy here, you've not drawn this before. Hmm. It's like the graph we just did, it, it is actually a parabola, but um, I've swapped my x's and y, my y's, right? Now, x's and y's are the horizontal and vertical axes. Yeah? Horizontal, vertical. So if I got this by swapping horizontal and vertical here, Instead of being like concave up and down, see how this parabola is up and down? This is gonna go sideways, right? So I will um, save you a bit of work. I want you to look at this graph here, and then I want you to turn your head 90 degrees to the left. Can you do that for me? <laughs> left. What you're looking at is, see this is the x-axis right now, but it's gonna become your new y-axis. And this is your y-axis right now, but it's gonna become your new x-axis. So everything's gonna be sideways. This is what it looks like. Okay? It's still a parabola, but instead of going up and down, it goes left and right. Okay, it still passes through. Okay, last one, what was this shape again? It's a circle. What can you tell me about this circle? Where's its center? It's at the origin, and what's its radius? One, so this is in fact is not just any circle, this is the unit circle. So let's draw this. Okay. So on the top here, at least the way I've drawn it, I don't know how you've arranged your page. These guys I've said were functions. Uh, I need my green. This is a function, this is a function. Okay, but this is not a function, and neither is this. Okay, so what visually tells you something's a function or not? Agni, what's your suggestion? Functions don't only work on graphs, but for the sake of simplicity to start off an idea, just like, um, a great parallel to your question is trigonometry. Does trigonometry only work in right angle triangles? And the answer is, we now know you can use it in any triangle you like, right? But when we first met it, 
we didn't explore that world because it would have made your brains explode. So, so we're going to start with just graphs, and later on you'll learn about other things. Okay. Alright, um, and you had your hand up, what was your suggestion? Okay, so because Aaron's suggestion has to do with the x's and y's. So what we're saying is each input, which is an x, x, has exactly one output, which is a y, like this. Okay? So if you've got a ruler, or even your pen will do, just anything that's straight, okay? What I want you to do is take it and put it on your page so that it's vertical. Okay? Now watch what happens as I look through each graph. Okay? This graph here, as I put this across, I'm imagining this is like an x value. So if I put this here, it's like x equals 0. If I moved it over here, it's like x equals negative 1, x equals 1, x equals 2. So I can move this left and right. As I move my ruler from left to right, do you see I only ever hit the graph once? Do you see that? Look, for example, here, there's the spot I hit. As I move, there's the spot I hit. Now here, now here. Does that make sense? So I take a vertical line and I use it as my test. It works all the way across. What about the parabola? As I move from left to right, I'm only ever touching the graph once. Can you see the point of intersection? Can you sort of imagine it as it moves? Okay. Now have a look at this parabola. Have a look at this parabola. When I put the line here, just right there, it is fine, isn't it? Like you see that, that's got exactly one output, it hits just once um, at the origin. But the second I move it a little bit, like this, now we're in trouble, it hits twice, once, twice. So this single output gets, sorry, single input gets two outputs and it keeps on getting two all the way. Does that make sense? Okay. And, and the same thing is here, right? Um, there are, there's a couple of perfect spots, do you see them? There's a couple of spots where you get one input, where are they? Oh, on the edges, right? Look, there's exactly one, and there's exactly one. But most of the time, you get two, right? I don't have just one output. I've got multiple outputs. In fact, later on, I'll show you graphs where you can have three or four or infinite outputs, and they are definitely, definitely not functions. Okay? 